Good evening, everyone. Everybody can be seated. Can everybody hear me clear? So first, I just want to thank you for being here, uh, Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters uh, 2024 Citizens of the Year. Uh, today, we're going to celebrate three individuals who have given back over the past year, probably over the past couple of decades, uh, to their communities there. Uh, first, we're going to get started. Uh, Father Paul is going to give us an invocation. Let's pray. Good and loving Creator, we thank you for the gift of this night. We thank you for the opportunity as Rotarians to once again serve our community, to honor uh, those men and women who uh, exemplify uh, the motto of Rotary of service above the self. Uh, we uh, ask you to uh, bless in a particular way Pat, Jenny, and Dale as they are honored tonight. And may they continue their good work uh, by your providential hand uh, so that in all that they do, uh, they may show forth uh, the love of the community that they have, uh, the love of their brothers and sisters that they have, and the love that they have uh, for humanity. Uh, may you bless the work of Rotary, uh, that we may continue to place service above self, and to always place uh, the needs of others before our own. And we ask this all in your name. Amen. Thank you. Next, can everybody stand? <laughs> Kathy, did you want to lead us in the play? Say it with me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next we have Jan. Janet. Janet, can you lead us in God Bless America? Oh, Janet, thank you, everybody. Then our key, four-way test. Good evening, everybody. These are the things we say and do. The rotary test is right behind Senator Brady. Uh, you can please repeat after me. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. So in your booklets that everybody has there, first page of the booklet there, it just talks about what is Rotary. So Rotary just celebrated 119th anniversary on February 23rd, 2024. Rotary International is an organization of business and professional persons united worldwide to provide humanitarian, humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards in all vocations, and help build goodwill and peace in the world. And I think that statement right there is why we're here today uh, with the three people that we're celebrating today. Uh, they're you know, not Rotarians yet, but we hope for them to join us. Yeah, just putting that out there. <laughs> and then the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster ideal, ideals of service as a basis of a worthy enterprise. Today we're going to recognize individuals who have made outstanding contributions the quality of life in Bridgewaters, and to raise funds to endow our scholarships and toolships 
to graduating public high school students in the Bridgewaters. Our club's endowment is divided into five funds. The George J. ASAC Memorial Fund of West Bridgewater, the Red Britain Memorial Fund for East Bridgewater, Paul S. Latola Memorial Fund for Bridgewater, John and Bia Rogers Memorial Fund for Vocations, and Dr. V. James Donato Memorial Fund for Vocations. Next, we have Dr. Wing Kai. Uh, my name is Wing Kai Ho. I'm the president elect of the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters. Ronnie will be uh, uh, is our president until June 30th, and next year I'll be serving from July 1st to uh, June 30th. Um, this is our year that we hope that we can tell the community more about our Rotary Club, and uh, we really would appreciate that if you. After this dinner, you learn more about what we do, and actually throughout the course of the night, and learn about how easy you can maybe join a Zoom meeting and to learn more about what we do in community service, in raising funds for schools, and also uh, doing all kinds of work internationally. So we wanted to give you a presentation by a couple of uh, long-time Rotarians about what we do locally and what we do internationally uh, to serve people in Massachusetts and also around the world. Um, just, let me just give you an idea that joining the Rotary Club is something that, um, you know, is, people have the wrong perception that the Rotary Club is only for people who have, you know, lots, lots of time, lots of money, and lots of, you know, other things that that's why they join the Rotary Club. But the Rotary Club is really a very a popular worldwide organization that everyone can join. And you know that uh, students from you know, 18 years old, they can join a, a Rotary Club to start learning about um, the Rotary Club in high schools. And when they go to adulthood, you know, we have Rotary members in ranging from their 30s to their 60s and 70s and 80s. And it's good for all ages. And it's very easy, usually we meet once a week and either on Zoom or having a meal uh, for breakfast. And um, we just try to do something good for the community. So each year we have a few events that uh, work for the community. So if you are interested in learning more about Rotary Club and you have our content information, we'll send you some following up emails. If you want to try to attend one of our meetings on Wednesday morning from 7.30 to 8.30 on Zoom, we certainly welcome you to join us and to learn more about the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite, uh, have, you know, a presentation about the local impact, um, and then we do some um, recognition, and then we'll talk about the global impact of the Rotary Club. So I'd like to invite uh, our former uh, club president, president uh, Mike, Dr. Mike Krasenik, and um, he's also the assistant district governor um, as well. Thank you, thank you Wing, and, and on behalf of all the members of the club, I want to thank you all for being here. But before I talk a little bit about uh, the local impact, there is someone here in our midst, a member of the Rotary Club, who just got the most prestigious award that can be given to any Rotary member, the Percy Hodgins Award for service to the community and, and the world. Uh, and this year it's gone to somebody at the, uh, the Bridgewaters Club and uh, her name, and she's standing right here. I want you to stand up, please. You don't have to talk. You don't have to talk. We're, we're so very proud of her because she does so much. Uh, she'll talk a little bit later about what she's doing in the international area, but she's done so much uh, uh, for the whole club and for the communities that, uh, that we serve. So on behalf of the membership, and I know everybody here, Fran, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, I, I just have a couple of minutes because we, we want to get down to who's getting the awards here rather than <laughs> to, to listen to me. But um, if you have your program here, you see a couple of words that I zero in on here. The, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, logo of the, of the uh, Rotary of the Rotary International is called Create Hope in the World. And Lord knows we know a little, we need a lot of hope in the world these days. So. Uh, ho hopefully, 
uh, when we all leave here, we're going to uh, take a little step forward and, and try to do on our own uh, advance hope in our world. But for, for Pat and Jenny and for uh, Dale, what we want to do is uh, recognize a couple of words here as well that are important for why we're here tonight. Uh, we're here because these are the best examples that we've seen of citizens, people who are members of the community, who are active uh, uh, in trying to improve the life of others, improve the life of institutions, improve the life of those neighbors that are there, uh, and, uh, and, and therefore the citizen, being a citizen is very important these days. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough citizens. We've got citizens who pay their taxes and obey the laws, but citizens especially who give back to the community uh, and, and do what they can in order to improve uh, whether it's Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, or West Bridgewater. Uh, and, and so uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, listening to them a little, bit, a little bit later, but it's important that all of us recognize the importance of being good citizens, uh, having a good sense of what citizenship means, and helping to create a better world, a world of hope uh, that uh, seems to be kind of missing these days and, and needs to be uh, uh, emphasized. And so without further ado, I, I just want to uh, uh, again thank you all and, and emphasize the fact that when we talk about what the Rotary does, it's, you'll, you'll be seeing that uh, up there on the, uh, on the, uh, on the video screen. Uh, it's, it's scholarships, it's food pantry, it's library, uh, it's a, a whole host of other uh, actions that we, we do in the community that uh, are important in order to advance uh, the, the future of young people. Uh, I happen to give out the award for uh, in West Bridgewater and every year I'm impressed that we're still in pretty good shape here in this country when you see the, the young people that are there uh, in West Bridgewater. I'm sure the same thing would be in East Bridgewater and in, uh, uh, and, and in Bridgewater. So the, the point is uh, service above, above self means that we're doing what we can in our own way, perhaps in a little way, because we're re representing three towns, but we do it in, in a way that I think is, is important in terms of helping people who are the homeless, helping people who are in need, helping people at Christmas time uh, and holiday time, uh, have, have helping people who are uh, uh, going to the library and need some books. Uh, uh, you, you name it, we're doing it, uh, and we're doing it with a great deal of pride. Uh, I also want to recognize we have a number of, uh, of past recipients of the uh, uh, of, of the award here, uh, and uh, I don't want to miss anybody, but I know uh, I, see a, I see a couple of them, so I'll just say thank you, uh, former I'll recipients of the... Pardon me? Ask them to raise. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> My boss here just told me she's the next president, so I've got to follow. So any, anyone here who is a past recipient of the Citizen of the Year Award, please stand and be recognized. Be recognized. Okay, with, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Rodney, and we're going to move on. So thank you all, and, and have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you, Mike. Now, before we move on to our recipients today, I just want to definitely recognize their Representative Brady, who joined us today. He's also going to be also giving an award to all our awardees as well. So with further ado there, we're going to get started with uh, Pat Neri. It's going to be introduced by Ray. My name is Ray Ajemian. One quote, one person with passion is better than 40 merely interested. That quote is from E.M. Forrester, a British writer. Again, one person with passion is better than 40 people merely interested. Pat is the person with passion that I'm speaking to. When I heard that Pat was going to be honored, I, I volunteered to speak for Pat for one area that I, that I was with her in terms of the planning board and her action with the planning board, which I'll speak to later. But then I realized that instead of three people, which I assume was going to be speaking in, in past, there's only be one and it's going to be me. And when I looked into what Pat has done for the town of Bridgewater in terms of the environment over the years, I was stunned by it. 
And I felt that, how can I do all this in the time allocated? So I'm, I hope that I can live up to what Pat has done in this speech, because she's done an awful lot. And we're mainly going to talk about her work with the environment in Bridgewater. You've heard of various environmentalists in our history, Henry David Thoreau, John Muir, Theodore Roosevelt, a number of people. They've all done an enormous, a lot, a, a enormous amount for this country. On the local level, though, in terms of Bridgewater, Pat is our hero. One quote. Whether trying to reduce excessive use of plastics and the destructive litter it creates, protecting water quality, saving trees and wildlife habitat, reducing light and noise pollution, Pat will speak out. It's a long list of somehow, it's a long, long list of issues, but somehow Pat manages to know, to be knowledgeable and to raise her voice about them all. Eileen Heine, you said that. That, that, it, that in itself sort of compresses what Pat has done. Pat has served on various boards. She served on the Board of Health, the Bridgewater Improvement Association, Lake Nipponicket Actrix Focus Team, the Taunton River Watershed Alliance, the Keith Homestead Task, and she's now serving on the Bridgewater Tree Committee with me. But the one committee which she has helped found and work, the, the enormous amount of work, is the Bridgewater Green Committee, which mission is a citizens outreach group for the promotion, promoting sustainable practices raising awareness and educating the community on environmental issues. Another quote. Pat was the force, focus, ideas for how to roll out our initiatives, and she, had, she had, had all the connections. She made it happen, and if she didn't know the expert, she made all the calls until she got the right person that was in the know. That's Bernice Morrissey, who won another person on the committee with her. Now, how do you accomplish things? If any of you have tried to do move your local government or state government or federal government anyway, you know it's not a simple process. You know that when you call somebody up and say this has to be done, it's not going to be done because you have to continue lobbying over a period of time to get it done. You have to show up at meetings. Pat shows up at meetings. You have to talk to officials on every level. You have to, in fact, you have to harass the officials to get something done. You work with other communities. Uh, in, in terms of getting something done. You work with other committees in town to possibly help. Pat's work done all that in terms of also with market, farmers market presence, business cards, parades, reaching out to other communities. What has she done? It's a long list and I can only go through these uh, fairly quickly in terms of time. Plastic bags is probably at the, at the top. Bridgewater banned certain types of plastic bags um, in 2016. Pat was the driving force behind this. We were the 20th state in the 20th town in, in the state to make the ban. There are now 150. It took four years to get it done. Four years, folks. It's not a simple process. And in order to get it done, you have to be involved on a constant basis. The bottle bill. Pat has pushed to add nips to the uh, bottle bill. That has not happened. It's going to be, she's going to continue pushing. That, that's an ongoing fight on her part. Um, styrofoam drop-off areas for recycling. A hydration station, or what we would call water bottle fillers. She has instituted these water bottle fillers at the various schools in Bridgewater. We know that has, in terms of the count, that saved literally thousands of water bottles by, by, by the students using them. Bait boxes, try to push to not use bait boxes for rats on, on uh, municipal property. Zoning, if you, ever, if you probably haven't heard of dark skies. You've heard the term light pollution. Well, the term dark skies is that you design lighting so that the lighting isn't going all over the place, it just shines down on the area that's needed. The planning board right now when developers come in, talk about using dark skies lighting for every new project. Pat. Um, no idling. People pick up their kids, drop off their kids at the, at the schools. They, idle, they just keep your car running. Turn your engine off. Uh, she got the council to, the Bridgewater Council, to um, um, 
agree to a petition, um, a proclamation on pollution-friendly community is one line. Uh, be it resolved, the Town Council, the Town of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, of the Town of Bridgewater is hereby declared a pollinary friendly community and the town encourages adoption of policies and practices that protect and support pollinator health by minimizing the sale and use of insecticides. It goes on. Probably never heard of the big belly solar thing. Big belly solar thing is a solar compactor which was sitting somewhere in town and Pat found out about it and she said, well, I now use the thing. And so it was, it is being used as we speak right now at the schools. Balloons blow, the idea, she belongs to balloons blow, which is designed to stop people from letting balloons go up in the air. They're, they're dangerous to the environment. Uh, no lawn, chemical, miscreen, uh, spray signs at the nip, so people will try to uh, prevent uh, the insecticides from going into the ground. What I intended to talk about when, when I was going to uh, speak about that was the planning board, which I just was on up until January. I, I think it's a case study of, of Pat at work. The planning board, as any board, is bound by certain regulations. The board uses um, various town documents, subdivision control laws, zoning, and so forth, and they get help from various people, planning a, a, a planner and the town engineer to make sure things are right. A proponent for a development or a building comes to the town with a wonderful presentation of how great this thing is going to be. It's the planning board's responsibility to make sure things are done right, that the plan meets all the codes and so forth of the town. But the problem is it's not that clear all the time. One of the requirements that the state requires is that you have public hearings. The public can speak to the project. You get pros and you get cons. If you sit on a board, many people on a board, and I'm sure there's some people sitting here, sit on the board after work. You're tired, you're giving, you're volunteering for the town, you're not paid. And you're sitting sometimes three hours and you hear people come up and say they don't like something, and sometimes you say to yourself, well, yeah, okay. Um, because people will sometimes simply say something because they don't want it. Pat is different. When Pat and others sometimes will come before the board, she will speak with facts. I've seen her with a loose leaf binder on information about why certain projects should not go in at the NIP. She does her homework. And I will tell you that there are people on the planning board I can name that have learned to respect her because they know when she comes up and speaks, she's going to be speaking to fact. And the thing is about Pat, when she speaks and when she, the, the uh, public hearing is put off for another two weeks, month, and so forth. It can go on for a year and a half or more. At the next meeting, there she is again. She doesn't go away. And you learn that she's never going to go away, and you listen to her. What I'm saying is that not only is Pat important in terms of the environment for Bridgewater, but she's important for the democracy of this country. We need people to speak. Whether you agree with them or not, you need those people. To close, this is from the famous Fred Rogers, from Mr. Rogers' fame. We live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider those people my heroes. Pat's our hero. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Well, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ray. When Ray suggested that I give him some info on my activities, I recalled a friend that was working on a project, and I said, oh, that will look great on your resume. She said, resume? I'm working on my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what I felt like when I was trying to put the info together. <laughs> But uh, when he, and also when he asked me to recall something that took place a few years ago, I told him I couldn't remember why I went into the kitchen earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to wholeheartedly thank the Rotary for this unexpected honor in recognizing my efforts to share the things that touch my soul, and hopefully yours. I need to clarify that I am not a one-man band. I have had some great support, members of my Green Committee and other committees in town, and a lot of people that are here tonight. We have to protect our surroundings and our ecology. So much devastation takes place every day that should not be allowed. I'm a staunch supporter of no pesticides, no herbicides. Remember the fireflies you saw when you were a kid? before the big chemical companies found their way to bigger sales. We have to keep that in mind. I believe in the precautionary principle. If you're not familiar with that, it is when you're not sure of the impact or if it could cause harm, don't do it. And I'm sure that's what I was thinking many times when I went before the planning board. Most people here know that Rotary is a global network of problem solvers where people join together to make change on sustainable projects. When I was working on the plastic bag ordinance, I didn't know that it was a vision of the Rotary or that the elimination of plastic bottles was one of their goals. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create change. Now I know who to reach out to for support. This award has energized me to do more, and I hope to work on an ESCAR campaign. If you're not familiar with that term, it's an acronym for Second Generation Anticoagulant Rodenticides, meaning that if we poison a rat, and, and uh, that poison in the rat when eaten by other wildlife such as bald eagles, owls, hawks, fox, etc., they die too. Education of this is critical, and I hope I live long enough to try to have another campaign. I am so pleased to be honored, along with Dale Julius and Jenny Williams, and I want to thank my daughters Lee and Christine and my fellow environmentalists who've come tonight. And we work on these issues not for recognition, but to make change. And I thank you very much. So, Pat, congratulations. Thank you. Receiving the Citizen of the Year. Oh, your award. Oh. Thank you. As well as the representative also has a word for you as well. Oh. Don't run away too Stay soon. <laughs> Pat, congratulations and congratulations to all the three recipients tonight. And I represent East Bridgewater in the Senate, but our good friend Senator Walter Timley represents Bridgewater, so I'm filling in for him to our Bridgewater, West Bridgewater recipients. He had another commitment, but I appreciate all your work on the plastic bag then because I was here for a cleanup for a short while ago and we found plastic bags in the river, and some of the things that, even though they have the triangle recycling thing, yeah. they are not biodegradable. They don't recycle, and our landfill is being overflowed. Yeah. And we have legislation to help anaerobic digestion that I visited some farms out in other parts of the Como. There's no odor, nothing, so you're not bothering the neighbors. In, in the food waste can be biodegradable, and it helps to put energy back in. And you know those little stickers that are on fruit, like apples, that says, oh, this is 100% you know, grown? Those do not biodegrade, those little stickers. So when we're 
you know, biodegrading food and all this stuff, you still see these stickers no matter what they try to put them through, they still show up. So True. thank you for all your work. So this is a citation being known from the Massachusetts Senate to the Mass Senate. Havoc says his congratulations to Pat and Ari in recognition of your hard work and dedication to the town of Bridgewater and the environmental by leading a successful plastic elimination campaign and for being named the 2024 Rotary Club Citizen of the Year from Bridgewater. It be further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the president of the Southern Karen Spoker, attested to by the clerk, Michael Hurley, and this is offered by your Senator Walter Tilly. Congratulations. next winner uh, for this evening and for this past year will be Jenny Williams, introduced by Jerry Lawrence. And also, you guys all know Jerry Lawrence will be a member by now. She's at more meetings than me, so. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a great honor to be here uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, I grew up in a Rotary family. My grandfather was a longtime uh, Brockton Rotarian. Uh, I see one of our recipients uh, tonight is a uh, East Bridgewater Kiwanian, and I'm a former Kiwanian, and I'm uh, proudly a 20-year member of the West Bridgewater Lions Club. And uh, we all know all these three spectacular organizations help change the world, not just here in our own little towns, uh, but truly around the world. And we need to get the message out that we're not just a bunch of old grumpy men. Uh, we're a fun organization that truly changed the world. I'll tell you, I uh, went to the Lions Club International Convention last year for the first time. Uh, it was hosted here in Boston. And sometimes when you're sitting in your club and your organization and you, and you try so hard and you do so much and you think, well, yeah, I helped one or two families, uh, sometimes you wonder, really, did I make that big of an impact in the world? Well, when you go to the international conventions and you see tens of thousands of members of your organization and know that they're making that same change all around the world, wow. Lions, Rotary, and Kiwanians, we make a difference. So let's hear a big round of applause for all of you. Uh, with that being said, that's uh, one reason uh, knowing and growing as a, as a Rotarian family uh, makes it extra special that I'm a past recipient and that I was asked to be here tonight to introduce uh, Jenny Williams. Um, before I start my speech, I want to let you all know if you're ever out in a pub, and there's a trivia night. <laughs> Anything to do with 60s, 70s, and 80s music, Jenny will know the year, Jenny will know the lyrics, and Jenny will know the artist. So get on Jenny's team. <laughs> One last bit of funny information before I start. A number of years ago, I bought a secondhand car from Jenny. It was only $500. And her husband showed up at my house with a two-page, what I thought was a bill of sale. It wasn't a bill of sale at all. It was actually a promise that if anything ever happened to the car, that Jenny and I's relationship and friendship wouldn't be hurt. And that is a true story. I really thought it was a bill of sale, but he said the friendship was more important, and I had to promise that that would never come between us. But as I said, it's a very big honor uh, to be honored to be here tonight to uh, introduce a very special person. I've known Jenny probably about 12 or 13 years, really close. As our kids uh, began growing up together, Jenny and I would be at school events, and uh, we'd watch our children grow together. We all know the saying that it takes a village. Well, I could say it takes a Jenny. Jenny is incredible. At times, I'd ask Jenny for help with my kids, and Jenny was there. Arrived to school, arrived from school, making dinner for my kids, running my kids to sporting events, a fun play date, or one of the countless trips to Great Wolf Lodge. Great Wolf Lodge. Jenny was always there for me, and Jenny was always there for my kids. The things Jenny does isn't because she's part of the Lions or the Rotary of the Kiwanis. It's because Jenny has a heart of gold, and that's who Jenny is. But Jenny's done much more than just help me. 
She's involved with her church, with our library, and so many more aspects of our community. Funny story, as we all told we should avoid talk of politics and religion, with Jenny, I'd say I've done a good job avoiding politics, because there we don't really agree. But with religion, there's a one story I gotta share. One Sunday morning, I get up early, and I didn't have to work that day, so I decided I'd attend service at the first church. We had a new minister, and I hadn't met him yet, so I was excited to meet him. So that Sunday, I showed up, only to find out the minister was on vacation. What a disappointment. But Jenny was delivering the sermon that day. And let me tell you something. Jenny missed her calling. I suspect it's because she had her hearing aids off. <laughs> Jenny, that service was incredible. You preached from your heart, and your story was truly inspirational. If I had to pick a movie that would best describe Jenny, I'd have to say probably Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but <laughs> not the way you think. It would be David Williams and the Seven Jennies. This woman does too much simply to be one person. I can't simply tell you all she does, much, much, much of it's outlined in the program in front of you. Now I know some of you think I'm poking fun because of height, and please, I do not need any dwarves mad at me for making height jokes. You can read about Jenny's volunteering in the biography, but you'll never know all the organizations that she's helped and supports, some with her time, some with her talents, and others with monetary donations. She does all this, plus she's a fabulous wife, a super loving mother, a horrible driver, <laughs> and most of all, and most of all, a spectacular friend that I will always love and adore. Thank you, Jenny, congratulations. really want to know, can everybody hear, is this thing on? Can you hear me now? Am I taller than Pat Neary? <laughs> That's what I think, man. Also, Pat, I can't even tell where you are right now. I want to talk about nips with you. Because when we did our town cleanup on the 20th of April, that probably was half of my trash bag. Just, and it was, we did this section around the school. It was probably kids. And it's disgusting. How can people do that to our land? And then we have dental classes, which is a totally different subject. <laughs> um, I wanted to thank you, Jerry, for those kind words and maybe embarrassing words. You were very well, you were a bit tame, though, because I thought you were going to go other places. <laughs> yeah. I am so honored and humbled to accept this award tonight. This. This standing up here is not who I am. I'd rather be behind the scenes and doing more. But there's a little part of me that likes this too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I thank the Rotary Club and all those associated with putting this night on. I especially thank Beth Roll Smith, who nominated me this year, and for Carol Ashton, who found, nominated me last year. And I thank all of my family and friends especially those who are here tonight. I really love doing community service. I don't think I can ever get to the level of Pat where she's going to planning board meetings and in front of every, that's not me. Maybe it will be someday. It's like going to church, community services. You, and I'm gonna say this too, which is anybody who knows me, I do not exercise. I live on Tiffany Circle in West Bridgewater, beautiful area, no traffic, sidewalks on both streets. You would have to put a gun to my head to make me walk that street. <laughs> but now I go to the gym, get in shape for women in Bridgewater if anybody's looking. I go three times a week, and it's like church. I always feel better when I come out than when I went in. I've always gone to church, even when I was a kid growing up in Elmwood. Um, I hardly ever miss a Sunday service, even though I just did, um, unless I'm sick or away. I think my faith has a lot to do with my community service. 
I can remember as a kid, you may know this name, I don't know. We were doing, we would do the junior, junior league at Bailman New Church. would do skits with Jay Churchill Price as he was there um, for elderly congregants in our church. I think maybe we went to nursing homes, I don't know. And they loved it. And you know what we did too, we always felt good going. It makes me feel good when I can do things for other people. You always hear the phrases, actions speak louder than words, and it's better to give than to receive. It certainly is. You always feel better when you do something nice for somebody. And now that my kids are older, even though I'm so only 29, my son is 19 and my daughter is 16, I can do more. Just don't tell my husband, because he won't. <laughs> I, I'm kind of glad, actually, that my husband is not here tonight. He's in Virginia for a conference. Um, so I can maybe rat him out a little bit. I cannot tell you. I would probably be a millionaire the number of times that he had said to me, I wish you would put all the time that you put into all your community service into my house, into this house. Let's put it this way. My house will never be on the cover of House Beautiful. <laughs> With two adults, two kids, two dogs, and three cats, it is lived in. There's always going to be something to do. And then it's coming up to be garden season, right? It's going to be beautiful weather. It's going to eventually stop raining. We have gardens coming. I love to garden. But let me correct that just a smidge. I love to buy plants. <laughs> and there they sit on my back deck. Sometimes I water them, sometimes I don't. And that's why I'm really glad I rained today because I hadn't. Um, and once I put them in the ground, I either don't fertilize them or they don't water them and they don't grow. I'm just really glad it rained today. Let's leave it at that. But that's another thing I should do, outdoor work. And I do community service instead. You've all read the stuff in the program about my biography. I was going to go down each one, but I, you can read. You can find that out. The two things that I have as my community service favorites, I have two of them. As far as church goes, that's not really a favorite because I'm always there anyway. Everybody in a small church always pitches in, so I'm a deacon, I'm a collector, I'm on the fellowship committee. My, other sis my two sisters here do everything else, so we've got it covered. Um, and being a friend of the Friends of the Library, being a member of the Friends of the Library, that just came about from me loving books, loving to read, we all pass books around. I don't do much for them, but I love going. And even Joy. In our town, we have a an organization called Joy for the older folks in our area. We do fundraisers and just try to provide things. We do the single a lot if you've ever gone to the Council on Aging. We pay for that. I fit in right there because I am also just older youth. But my favorites are school, too. My absolute favorite, and I'm not saying because she's sitting over there, is School on Wheels, which I don't think, it was listed in the program, but it wasn't um, named. School on Wheels is a terrific organization in East Bridgewater on Laurel Street. They make backpacks for homeless kids. They provide tutoring and mentoring for those less fortunate. We go, my sisters and I and Carol Ashton go almost every Tuesday morning, unless they don't need us or we are busy, or we're working. We go every Tuesday to do backpacks, do inventories of donations and the like. We are sometimes called, or we have been called, the Bridgewater Sisters. That's what they, we had a volunteer night last year and we won the volunteer of the award as the Bridgewater Sisters. It surprised me I don't even know how many years I've been doing this, but how many people are homeless in this area. In this area, 
East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, we had a case of a kid in Easton. Okay, Easton is a pretty affluent town. But they had a, a child who was bringing in school supplies to school in a paper bag. I can't imagine what that did to that child. But we, School on Wheels was able to help them get a backpack. Um, and Barbara, correct me, I think we did over 6,000 backpacks last year. Ten. Is that crazy or what? Ten. There's 6,000 people. What, 10? I'm sorry, 10,000. It's just amazing to me that, that we actually need this in this land of plenty. You know? um, they help a lot of children, like I said, with the backpacks and the mentoring and the tutoring. I don't know if I could be a mentor or a tutor because I'm not. That's not my bad to stay in the background and make the backpacks. But keep it in mind when you go school shopping around August or so, pick up some supplies, drop them off there, right on Laurel Street. Sometimes we don't have room because people are so generous to store all those. But buy some extra and donate it because it will really be put to good use. My other favorite, which I just started this year and I love it, is Meals on Wheels. According to this guy, I'm the driver, but I still haven't hit anything yet. So that's good. <laughs> Leslie is the go-inner. She talks to the people. Um, and it's, I can remember when we first started, I used to get so annoyed with her, because oh, we gotta go, we gotta be back by 11.30. And I'm, I so regret that, because it's, this could be the only interaction these seniors have with people all day. And I just, and, you learn about these people and what their lives are like, who, if they've got anybody caring for them. I know the Council on Aging is bringing them meals, but what about the rest of the time? Um, you really start to care for these people. And I know through Leslie, because as Martha will also tell you, she talks to everybody. So I'm getting to know these people very well, and I like it. I, I think this interaction with them is so helpful, because a lot of them are going through health issues, uh, and they need an extra helping hand. And if Council on Aging in West Bridgewater is looking for meal on wheels drivers, so if you have time, go on over and apply. I think I'm almost done, Martha, don't worry. It's not gonna be long. <laughs> in my biography, it says, um, I, am, I have had two kidney transplants. I am on the inactive list for a third. They're going back and forth whether I should be brought active or not. But my numbers this last time are pretty good. Um, so I'm really hoping they stay good, not only because I don't like dialysis, nobody does, and I can keep doing the things that I'm doing now, maybe more. I would love to do more. Um, but I think if I could encourage you to all do something Something, one thing, pick one thing that you like. And I know you probably, life, life is busy, we know that. But if you could pick one thing to donate your time or your monies or anything to, that would be, there, there's just so many people out there that need help. And we're thankful we have this Rotary Club to do that, and the Lions and the Colonians. We're very lucky for that. I think about that four, four way test. I would, I would add a fifth one. It makes me feel good. It makes you feel good. Do it. You just have to start with one thing. And I think once you start, you'll want to do more. I know I do. One person can make a difference. Will that person be you? Thank you again for this award. <laughs> citation for you from the state house as well and before I read this thank you for all your work on school on wheels meals on wheels 
And also, because I, I was in a road race, was, I didn't run it this year because I'm out of state, but, but when, I was, when, when I was even younger though, um, one of our former governors cut funding for a library that was not handicap accessible. My, my predecessor, Tom Kennedy, who was in the wheelchair, couldn't even get in the library unless we carried him up the stairs, never mind a young child not being able to get in the library. And the library was a beautiful historic building built with a grant from Andrew Carnegie, but it was never handicap accessible. So when I was on the city council, we went in and advocated on behalf of the libraries. And thank you for all the people in the room who support libraries. So this is a citation. And oh, one last thing, too. When you do single, you know, I got a lot of friends who go to these establishments, retired teachers, and so forth. If you ever want to join their team, they're looking for a good advocate for single. So I'll let you know. All right. So this is a citation for the Mass Senate. Hit back sentence, congratulations to Jenny Williams in your recognition of your outstanding commitment to the community as treasurer of the West Bridgewater Public Library and Town Emergency Fund and for being named the 2024 Rotary Club Citizen of the Year for West Bridgewater. And this is signed by the Senate President, Karen Coker, the clerk, Michael Hurley, and your Senator Walter Tilly. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Next up, we have our, our own awardee, uh, Fran Jeffries. She's going to talk about the Rotary's global impact. Well, I'm looking at a bunch of community service groupies here, and it's a great honor to um, also recognize our citizens of the year for this year and to honor our three service clubs that Jerry mentioned and several others of you. Rotary, Kiwanis, and Lions are very present in our communities and we depend heavily on them. If you're not already engaged, we would invite you to join any one of them. Um, and I would urge us all in a global community uh, to work together. Jerry, are you listening? <laughs> Good. Um, we've had the opportunity in the Bridgewater's Rotary to uh, extend ourselves through many opportunities that come up you know, sometimes someone just says, oh, I'm, they mention a project they're doing and you're interested and you connect with that and the next thing you know, you're writing a grant for it and you're inviting people here, you're going to that location and you're networked around the world. We don't live on, in an island, we live on a big old planet. And all the work that we do uh, around the world and in our communities is what lifts us up each day. Thank you for joining us tonight and watching all the other things. Uh, one other challenge before I believe this. You know, we do a one fundraiser that is, doesn't have much visibility in the community. On New Year's Day morning, the Rotary Club of the Bridgewaters raises money for an organization called Shelterbox, which does emergency relief in highly distressed and conflict zones. Uh, for housing only, and we do a polar plunge. Just saying, Jerry. <laughs> we would invite you to join us on that day. Uh, the Brockton Rotary Club joins us now, and um, you can pick your own event or your own organization to sponsor, but it's a terrific fundraiser and lots of fun, uh, all again in the spirit of community service. Thank you. Next up, I'm going to have some words by a key for the Bruce Marquis Citizen of the Year Award. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's, been an, uh, it's an honor for me to be able to say a few words on behalf of Lucy and on uh, behalf of the Marquis family. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm happy and honored to say a few words regarding our beloved fellow Rotarian, Bruce Marquis, the founder of this wonderful Citizen of the Year, well-deserved recognition for the people of action who make a difference in the community and around the world, and which is service above self, and uh, really proud of you guys. 
Bruce left behind not just his legacy of many hats that he wore, but his words of encouragement and his tireless effort and continuation of recognition of the citizen of the Bridgewaters. And his lovely wife, Lucy, who's here with us today to join us to celebrate this event with us. <coughs> with Bruce, it was always service above self. Whether it was promoting this club, checking on people in need at the hospitals, or serving coffee at the VA hospital, or attending the events at the Rotary functions, and driving fellow Rotarians there and back, there was not a dull moment on his day. I got to spend a lot of time with him on many occasions, and there was never a silent moment. There was so much he had to offer with his knowledge and his wisdom and some jokes. He was able to connect with people at every level. A Red Sox fan, he definitely knew all his bases and he covered all his bases. He was actively playing softball till the end. He loved hiking, he loved spending time in the woods. He loved nature and the environment. He left many memories behind. He was a coach, a great mentor, humanitarian and believed in equality of life regardless of gender, regardless of gender, race, color, or religion. He was an exemplary for all of us, and he definitely lived by the four-way test. Although Bruce is a founder, but he would prefer more of his time to be used in recognizing of a citizen of the years, and I will not take too much time from this main event, but I would like to end this with a few words. Just a little prayer for Bruce. May the Lord grant Bruce a high place in heaven and shower his blessing upon him and reward, his, reward him for all the work he's done for his creation. And may the Lord bless all the Rotarians who are deceased, who have paved their road for us to follow and bless the Rotarians who are present here and are recipients of the Citizen of the Year in the past and the present with continuation of the journey of service above self. In the end, to the Lord we belong, and to the Lord we shall return. I would like to thank you everyone for being here, and I'm pretty certain that Bruce is here somewhere listening to all this. And I would like to leave this word, like Bruce always said, be the change you like to see in the world. And this is what we're seeing with the citizen of the years today. They are being the change that they like to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Aki. Next up, our last citizens of the year, Dale Julius, the Bicentennial Group. You will be introduced by his wife, Carol. Hello. Twelve years ago, I stood before a group much like this one, and I gave a testimonial from my father-in-law, Jack Julius, when he was chosen to be citizen of the year. It was a very proud moment for me. And while it wasn't the first time I was proud to be a Julius, it was definitely a memorable one. One for the highlight reel, shall we say. That highlight reel, though, the one that includes all the best moments of being a Julius, everything on it is now overshadowed by this night. Don't cry yet. <laughs> it's my distinct privilege to be able to once again introduce East Bridgewater Citizen of the Year, and this time it's my husband, Dale. This is an honor that I know he feels deeply as he profoundly values community service and his actions as co-chair of the Bicentennial Committee truly exemplify how seriously he takes his commitments. And when I say he takes them seriously, what I really mean is I didn't see a whole lot of him last year. <laughs> there were a lot of meetings and there was a lot of what I called all things Bicentennial. It was all worth it though, not just because it was an incredibly fun year for our town, but for this moment right now a moment of recognition and respect, a moment of honor and celebration, a moment to say thank you, and a moment to say congratulations. And with that, I give you East Bridgewater Citizen of the Year, Dale Julius. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here um, this evening. And thank you to the Rotary Club for all you do at the Bridgewater's for choosing me as East Bridgewater Citizen of the Year. Uh, it's quite a thrill. And congratulations to my fellow award winners, Pat Neary of Bridgewater, 
and Jenny Williams of West Bridgewater. It was wonderful uh, talks that you both gave, very inspirational. And enjoyed them immensely. I think it's truly fitting to hold this Tritown event right here at Sachem Rock, seeing how this is where the Bridgewaters began, uh, right the hill behind us, so it's kind of appropriate to be here. I was told I should speak for about 10 minutes, and I thought, hmm, what can I talk about for 10 minutes? And someone gave me the idea that I should talk about my own interests. So if you're ready, we're going to do a 10-minute discussion on the Battle of Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, I'm so glad to be here at Sachem Rock. It's a spot that has been significant to me as a Boy Scout, as a member of Dale and the Duds, as a Civil War reenactor, and as a location of several of our bicentennial events this past year. It's really wonderful to be from a town like East Bridgewater, a town filled with great history and terrific people. Although I'm not a native son, I'm pretty close. My folks moved here in 1953 and while at the age of two, I didn't have much to say in that decision, but it was certainly the beginning of all the things that have somehow ended up with me standing here today. So if you'll indulge me, I'll tell you about a few of those adventures. One of the first things that I got involved with as a child was Boy Scouts. My mom and dad were both scout leaders, so naturally I joined. I met so many great people through that program, many of them became lifelong friends. Scouting taught me early on that success depends on groups working together. Whether you're going camping or getting a merit badge, teamwork is the key to progress and fun too. I've now been a scout for 65 years. Never got past that tenderfoot rank. But, uh, and although my active participation has waned recently, I'm still registered as a scout leader of Troop 32 and very grateful for all the memories that we've made with that. As you may know, I have a bit of interest in the Civil War, which uh, is something that's been important to me. This began in 1961 when I was 10 years old. I was, shall we say, a persuasive young lad, and I convinced my folks that we should go to Gettysburg for the 100th anniversary of that battle. This trip, as it turns out, became the foundation for my lifelong study of this time in our history. In 1965, I was able to participate in East Bridgewater Civil War programs and parade to celebrate 100 years since the war ended. This passion led me into Civil War reenacting, a hobby I enjoyed for many years with my family and friends. And you may recall that we did the Frank Howard days right here in this field, in the rain, <laughs> in the snow, <laughs> quite the adventure. The culmination, though, of all this studying was the establishment in 2005 of the East Bridgewater Civil War Roundtable. This group, which is still very active, allows me to work and research alongside like-minded friends monthly at the public library. I may be the leader of this group, but I have learned so much from the people who attend that the benefit feels like it's all mine. It also resulted in my appointment to the East Bridgewater Historical Commission, also a monthly meeting and a share, sharing passion for preserving and promoting the history of our town. Another long-term commitment, I must be really old by now, I'm up to 60 years already. Another long-term commitment of mine, which you may have heard of, about as being the lead singer for the band Dale and the Dutch. Yeah. When the thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I had to do that. Um, when the Beatles upended the world in 1964, I, along with half of the free world, apparently wanted one thing, to be in a band. As luck would have it, my brother Randy shared this dream with me, and he pulled together some musicians that he knew pretty quickly. The music of the 50s was having a revival, and all we had to do was put a little grease in our hair and don leather jackets. We were worried about learning the music after that. But we were on our way. And the name, I know, the Duds. Who would have thought that was a good idea? But it worked, and now Dale and the Duds are entering their 52nd year in business. Yeah. Yeah. More recently, modern history, Something that has become part of my life is the Qantas Club of East Bridgewater. They're sitting here tonight with us. I appreciate that. Um, Carol and I joined this 15 years ago. Much like Rotary, this is a great organization full of people who want to do good things for their community. I'm president now for the second time, and it's an honor to represent this dedicated group of individuals. We work hard, but we work together. We give away a lot of money, and we have some fun. 
And that seems to be an underlying current with these groups because you work together, you have fun, you do good things. But that isn't what I came to talk about. I came to talk about the bicentennial. <laughs> now, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that my participation in all of these different events and activities over the years, along with the fact that my wife's the chair of the select board, might have led me to being appointed to the co-chair of the Bicentennial Committee back in 2022. I was thrilled, though, seriously, to be part of this. And my co-chair, Dave Sheedy, is back there somewhere, and also a former recipient of this award. Um, we got together and we started having meetings and immediately got a, a wonderful crew of people together. And yes, Karen, I lost my place, so I have to go back to it. So she said, don't stray. Okay. So I was thrilled to be part of this, and my co-chair Dave Sheedy and I started meeting right away to establish a committee and a group of volunteers to work on this with. I'd like to take a moment now to thank the committee members. We're going to bring them up in a few minutes, but uh, David Sheedy back there go, is a co-chair. Noreen Cahill was our treasurer. Katie Cavanaugh, who's with us tonight, was our secretary. Then Paul Cannell, John Haynes, Dee Dee Rogers, Beth Pays, who was also another recipient of this award, Tom Turner, and Nancy Hill. And they're all just great people, and uh, we had a really a fun time working together. The list of accomplishments of this group is long, and all I can say about that is we started with the intention of offering one event a month for the whole year. And that seemed like it might be tough to do, but when the dust had settled, we had done somewhere around 30 events for the whole year. And on top of that, we decorated the whole town with banners and signs. We ran a traveling bicentennial souvenir store, hosted an online trivia game every Friday of the year, and we published a commemorative book, which is going into its second print right now. But our biggest event of the year was going to be held during the second week of June to coincide with the actual date that the town was incorporated. First, it was a big celebration at the Commercial Club, which included food, music, vendors, beer, lots of beer. <laughs> we had East Bridgewater beer. It was very special. And a bonfire, a good old-fashioned bonfire. Later in the week, we scheduled a Dale and the Duds concert on the Common, along with a fireworks show. Of course, the weather was a factor, and I still can't believe this happened. We were worried about it. We had a big meeting up at Town Hall. I still can't believe I found myself in a room full of very important town leaders. The police chief, the fire chief, the DPW director, the town administrator. They all had radios, walkie-talkies, and inside information on weather. And they all turned and looked at me. What do you think we should do? I said, well, I was kind of like, I don't know what I said. I'm not really sure what I said. But we decided to delay the celebration due to the forecast. And I'm not sure what I said about that, but luckily we did delay. And luckily it actually rained, which I was very happy that it rained because people were on Facebook. Why did they cancel the... But we, it, it rained and we had a wonderful uh, fireworks display in the concert two days later on the 60th, two days after our actual incorporation. But people still are talking about it and they say it's some of the finest fireworks I've ever seen. So it was, a, it was a great, great thing and I owe a lot to the people back there that worked tirelessly through the year. And I am truly humbled to stand before you and accept this honor. I won't say that I don't deserve it because I'm not that humble. <laughs> but I will say that I didn't, I didn't do one single bit of this myself. I was privileged to have parents who led by example as volunteers, and they supported me and encouraged me in anything I wanted to try. My father received this award back in 2012, in fact. My days in scouting, my time as a Civil War reenactor, my role in establishing the Civil War Roundtable, my performances with Dale and the Duds, my service as president to Kiwanis, and finally, my work with this Bicentennial Committee, the members and volunteers. They were all successful because of the people around me. I'd love it if you could picture my family, my fellow scouters, my colleagues, my friends, co-workers standing up here in a circle around me, cheering me on and telling me, as they've done, for my life. 
Come on. <laughs> Could I put my down on your mouth? Thank you so very, very much. I appreciate it. That last one got me. Thank you. I'm going to bring the group up after this for a picture. Congratulations, Dale. And I met Dale many moons ago when a lot of friends worked at the Shaw's Warehouse down in Sweeney's Bridgewater. And we all had a lot of friends who played in bands, and I tried out. Dale wanted to follow the Beatles. I looked up to Dale and the Dutch. I want to be like Dale and the Dutch when I grew up. So. But uh, we all had fun playing at clubs together and so forth, and, and he still continues to play, and they'll let me get up and do a tune, usually at last call, when they want to clear the crowd, of course. But, uh, but uh, I learned later on when I got into public office, I learned a lot more of what Dale has done for his community with the historical Commission, the Civil War reenactment, and, and the, the vice hotel that they did with many volunteers that are in this room today. And you did a fantastic job. And I got to say, they unveiled a time capsule. And <laughs> they had a Happy Meal in there. And, and like the Twinkie, the Happy Meal still did not disintegrate, it was still intact. But, <laughs> but uh, we have a few citations. One's from the House of Representatives, and this is from your representative, Allison Sullivan, who she's got a family commitment, so she could not make this. So this is an official citation from the House of Representatives to Dale Julius in recognition of your extraordinary work as a co-chair of the Bicentennial Celebration Committee for the town of East Bridgewater. And this is signed by the Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, and your state representative, Allison Sullivan, I'll meet So congratulations for that. Thank you. And this one's from the State Senate. Congratulations to Dale Julius for being named the Citizen of the Year by the Rotary Club of the, of the Town of Bridgewater, or East Bridgewater, or the Bridgewater, that's what they named it, for all three, for being an outstanding citizen with enormous local pride contributed to your volunteer work. And this is signed by the Senate President, Karen Stoker, the clerk, Michael Hurley, myself, your Senator Mike Brady, and Walter Tivoli, who used to represent East Bridgewater, and he's still representing Bridgewater and West Bridgewater, so congratulations, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Have a picture here tonight. All done. Three, two, one, please. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well deserved. And thank you to everyone in Rory for all you do. You do God's work out there. Anything I can be of help, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now before we move, we're going to ask that the committee from the Bicentennial work their way up here for a picture. It's going to be worth doing. I know it'd be tough. Go out that door and come around and make it easy. Maybe I'll see you too. Do we have a hand for the Bicentennial? Thank you for everybody coming for our 2024 Citizen of the Year. Uh, please do not forget before you leave, see Janet in the back, we have a dessert reception there. So with that, I'll enjoy the meeting.